shine on me, shine on me, let the light from the lighthouse shine on me, shine the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. And as I pray, as always, I encourage each and every one of you to pray in your hearts and your minds. Oh, gracious and kind Father, yes. our Father, our which art in heaven, yes. hallowed would be thy name. Yes. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Gracious and kind Father, loving Father, again we come to the house of worship. We come to you, Lord God, with our heads bowed, our hearts humbled, and our focus on you. We come to say thank you, Lord. You've been so good. From the last Sunday of last month to the first Sunday of this month, You've been good. You've blessed us. You've kept us. You've led us. You've guided us. You've strengthened us. And God, all we can say is thank you. Thank you for allowing us to raise up this morning to find ourselves on our sleeping bed and not in our grave yet. Thank you, Lord, for the food on our tables and to find everybody table able, God. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for bringing us 
over the dangerous highways, keeping us safe from hurt, harm, and danger. Thank you, Lord. Thanking you, Lord, for the love that flows from one heart to the other. Thank you, Lord. For hearing and answering our prayers, Lord God. Thank you. We ask, Father God, that you bless, first of all, all over the land and the country, but we ask that you bless right here at Union Baptist Church, Lord God. We ask, Father God, that you touch our hearts and our minds. We ask, Father God, that you touch our bodies. Touch our, touch our bodies, Lord God. Lord, we know that if you touch us, hallelujah, everything will be all right. From the very top of our heads to the soles of our feet, Lord God, touch in the matchless name of Jesus. We ask that you bless those who are going through pains right now. Touch, because we know that you're a healer, Lord God. <laughs> and you know that we, we know that you're not a failure, because there is no failure in you. Hallelujah. God, we ask you that you will touch our minds, Lord God. When we would go left, we pray that you will direct us, redirect us to a place of right and righteousness. Thank you, Lord God. We ask them that you bless each ministry here at Union Baptist Church. From the pulpit to the back door, to the front door, Lord God. We ask that you bless the man of God who you've assigned to lead us, Lord God. And that we follow him as he follows you. We ask that you bless him, Lord God. Touch him right now. Lay your hands on his body now in the name of Jesus. Restore him, Lord God, in the matchless name of Jesus. We know that you can believe by faith that you will. We ask that you bless each ministry here. Hallelujah. The choirs, they sing. Anoint them from on high. The ministers, as he preach, Lord God, the man of God who's going to declare your word on today. Touch him, Lord God. Strengthen him. Allow, you, allow him to speak to us as you speak to him. In Jesus' name. The ministers, the mothers, Bless in the master's name of Jesus. Touch somebody's heart, Lord God, that they may come to the front of the church, to the foot of the cross, and say, I yield, I yield. Can't hold out no longer. Father God, last but not least, I pray that you will bless me, your humble servant. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like if you rise to your feet for our church covenant. Union Baptist Church, our co church covenant is as follows. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, We do now, in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We do therefore, therefore, the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinance, discipline and doctrine to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions to religiously educate our children to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumstantially in the church, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagement, and exemplary in our deport, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love. To be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, 
and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. Together, we moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will, as soon as possible, unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. Good morning, UBC. How's everyone feeling? Now, I know you feel like worshiping God this morning, right? Because I know that the Lord woke you up this morning. Got you looking all beautiful, blessed, and lovely. So come on, let's worship. Come on now. How many know that we do serve an on-time God? He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. The children of Israel trapped at the Red Sea by that mean old Pharaoh and his army. They had a water all around them and Pharaoh's on the track. But out of nowhere, God stepped in and made a highway just like that. I want to tell you, he's an old. The children of Israel trapped at the Red Sea by that mean old Pharaoh and his army. They had a water all around him and Pharaoh on their track. But out of nowhere, God stepped in and made a highway just like that. I gotta tell you, he's an old. you're going through. He may not come when you want him, but I know that he's a right on time. He's 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 on time. Oh, yes. He's on time. Oh, my God is on time. He's 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 on time. Oh, yes. He's on time. I tried him and I know. He's on time. He's on time. He's on time. He's on time. You ain't got to worry about the He's on time. He's on time. Oh, yes, he's on time. He's an old time. Yes, he is. Oh, 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 Yes, he is. Joe say, he may not come when you want it, but he'll be there. He's on 
on time, yeah. He's on time. 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 Oh yes, he's on time. No, he's on time. He's on time. He's never late. He's on time. He's on time. He's on time. Oh yes, he's on time. He woke me up this morning. He's on time. He's on time. He's on time. He's on time. Oh yes. Yes, he is. Oh. you're going through, God can always fix it. He's a fixer. God is a healer. God is mighty. There's nothing that he can't do. And I'm going to tell you, I'm a witness because I've been in some situations in my life where I didn't know where I was going, where it was coming from, how I was going to fix it. But you know what I did? I got down on my knees and I talked to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I told him that I know you're gonna fix it for me. So I want y'all to worship with me as I sing this song because this is one of my songs that I, it took me through a lot of things. So please excuse me if I get a little emotional because God is good to me. Y'all ready to worship with me? I don't know how God's gonna do it. And I don't know when he's gonna fix it. I only know it. Yes, God's gonna make a way for me. I know he's going to do it. Help me say victory. You know what? He never told me how he's going to do it. He never told me how he's going to fix it. But I'm happy shouting yeah. Yeah, I know he's going to make a way for me. I know he's going to do it. Help me say victory. Now there ain't no, ain't no harm in moaning, y'all. Have y'all ever had to go in your room and say, mm -hmm. did you ever have to ask him, Lord, come on, come on, Come on and fix it. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know you're going to make a way for me. I know you're going to do it. Help me say victory. Yeah, come on and just do it. Come on, come on. Come on and just do fix it. Hey, ooh, I need you 
it to fix it. Now I'm happy, shouty. Yeah. Yeah. God's gonna, gonna make a you. way. I need you, Lord. I need you to do, do it. it. Help me say do it. Do it. Come on and do it. Do it. Fix it for me. Do it. Do it for me. Do it. I know you will. Do it. I know you can. Do it. I know you will. Do it. Can we put our hands together and give God a hand clap of praise? I said, can we put our hands together and give God a hand clap of praise all over the sanctuary? Come on, if you need God to work some stuff out, I dare you to give God a praise like it's a 911. If you need God to work some stuff out by the mow, I dare you to praise him like it's a 911. Come on, if you don't need a miracle, that's okay. But if you need a miracle, I dare you to praise him like it's already done. Come on, fix it, Jesus. Come on, fix it. Come on, fix it, fix it, fix it. I don't know what I'm going to do if you don't work it out, God. I don't know where I'm going if you don't make it good, God. Only God can make it good. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. If God don't do it, it won't get done. Now look at somebody else down your row and say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, if God don't do it, it won't be done. Now come on and give God some praise like he's already working it out. I said, give him praise like he's already worked it out. I said, give him praise like it's already done. Give him praise like he's already worked it out. I'm already healed. I'm already delivered. The way has already been made. Open your mouth and praise him. If that was for me, it would be all right, but I said give God praise. I said give God praise. Lift up your head, all ye gates, and be ye lifted, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, who's strong and mighty. The Lord, who's mighty in battle. Lift up your head and give him glory. Come on, you, you may be seated in the house of the Lord, but I, I just, there's something in me that just got to praise God every time I come into God's house. I don't understand people who just come to church to look at people. I've never been that type to come to look at nobody. I really came to get what I need from God so I can go home and get through this week. Hallelujah. I honor God. I honor God for his goodness. I honor God for his grace. I thank God for his, for just being who he is in my life. I thank God for the opportunity. Any opportunity you have to mount the sacred desk to proclaim God's word, is, it's, it's a blessing. It's a blessing for God to see something in you to deliver a word. And I'm grateful. I give honor to the pastor of this house. 
Y'all can do better than that. The pastor of this house, in his absence, we are asking that the Lord continue to bless Pastor Johnson, and we thank God for his healing power and total restoration. We thank God for total restoration. Amen. And to his wife and family, we give honor to God. I thank God for all of the deacons, to the chairman of the deacon board. Amen. To the mothers, to the uh, mothers board, to all of you, someone, everybody is somebody in Christ. You know? I just give honor to God um, for my being here today. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to go, I'm going to be really quick with this. Go with me to a very, very familiar passage of scripture. And I, I want y'all, let's walk this together. Mark, the uh, third chapter, beginning at the first verse. Mm-mm. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassions they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed, thy hand has provided. So great is thy faithfulness, Lord, on to me. Great is thy faithfulness. That's all I'm saying this morning. Great is thy faithfulness every time I wake up in the morning new mercy that I see thou thou was changes not thy hand has provided Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, on. Unto me. Now, if you know God's been faithful, if you know God's been grateful, I dare you to praise Him. Mark chapter 3, and it reads And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. Watched him whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, and they may accuse him. And he said unto the to the man which had been with had the withered hand, and he said, "Stand, Amen. Stand forth." And he said unto them, "Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil, to save life or to kill?" But they held their peace. And this is the religious people. They held their peace. And when he had looked around about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, stretch forth thine hand. 
And the Bible says, and he stretched forth his hand, and his hand was restored as whole. You can have your seats for just a little while. I, I want to also look at the book of Job. I'm sorry. Let's look at uh, Joel chapter 2 and 25. And it says, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And if I could just leave with you a thought for today, if I had to put for a topic, it would simply just be stretch out. It would simply be stretch out. Uh, we brothers and sisters, just for a couple minutes, I do have. We're walking through the text, and one thing about me is I like to I like to paint a picture when I'm looking at the scripture because that's the way it makes sense to me. We're walking through the text, and we see that Jesus here he's he's in the height of his ministry. The, the buzz, the word is getting out that he's out here performing miracles. People is get people are getting healed, people are getting delivered, people are getting set free. He is in the He's in full gear with preaching and teaching the word of God. Mind you, I, I'll say he was teaching the word. As he, was de- as he was demonstrating the word, he was also teaching the word. In this particular time, we see here that Jesus, there's a lot of buzz that has already followed him as he's gone his way. And, and you know, anytime you're doing the work of Christ, you'll always have a hater or two, you know, along, you know. I, I, I typically don't like preaching about haters because I feel like, you know, if you preach that too much, you'll, get, you'll have a church full of schizophrenics. They think everybody after them. No, I'm talking about when you're really doing the will of God, you will always have somebody who's on the background watching your every move because they're not really interested in the good that you're doing. They're really interested in getting you caught up in doing good. So we see here that Jesus is in the height of his ministry, and instead of the religious folk being happy for people getting their deliverance, it's the opposite. I'm going to encourage somebody, and this wasn't even in my sermon, don't be upset when you start go elevating and, you, and the people that you thought was going to be there to celebrate you. Don't be upset when those very people will be the same ones trying to bring you down. It's the way it goes. It's, it's, just, it's, it's just how it happens. It's, it's how anointed. I can't, can't do nothing about it. It has nothing to do with me. Don't be mad at me for what God is about to do in this next season. Look at somebody saying, God, nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with me. As a matter of fact, as we look at this text and we look at the, the man with the withered hand, and, and, and I've read this story before, but I read this a few weeks ago, and all of, all of a sudden it became one of my favorite texts. I said, we're looking at the man with the withered hand, and the Bible says that Jesus was in the synagogue and he was teaching and all, he, 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 run, he encounters a man who has no name. You, it's always special when somebody ain't got no name in the Bible because you could take your jacked up mess and put your... <laughs> That's what, it works just like that. But he, the, Bible says that, the Bible says that he was in the synagogue and, and he, 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 he comes in contact with a man with a withered hand. He had, he had a noticeable issue. The man had a withered hand, and the Bible says, and straightway, Jesus didn't even acknowledge the man at first. He didn't acknowledge his issue. He didn't acknowledge what was evident. I'm sure there was a people around him that saw that this man had a withered hand. There was, there was people around him that, that saw that this man was struggling. And in and, 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 and times back then, I'm sure your hands was very important to have. They didn't have a lot of uh, computers and stuff, so that you had to have your hands. So I'm sure everybody noticed that this man had an issue. And instead of addressing his issue, Jesus tells this man to stand forward. Uh, I'm almost done with my text, but I come to encourage somebody today that a lot of times we all got our insecurities, and we all got them things that, that, we, we, that we're dealing with, and we all got them stuff that we try to hide in the background. You know what I'm saying? We all got them insecurities. What you talking about? <laughs> Come in, ladies, come to church without your peace on. And sometimes, man, come in here without the Beijing in your head. and see, We'll see how humble we get. We all got stuff that we're trying to hide. And, and my telling us, telling us, 
We all got something that we're trying to hide. But what do I do when, when, with the thing, the very thing I'm trying to hide and Jesus puts me on forefront? It wasn't my, it wasn't my, it wasn't my, it wasn't my enemy that put me on forefront. It wasn't my enemy that put me on blast. It was Jesus that told me to stand up in front of everybody with me and my issue. So what do I do? I got a noticeable problem. I'm already dealing with my insecurities. I already, I'm already in my own head about what, how I'm not good enough about something and how even if I tried to reach out my hand to give somebody a shake, I couldn't do it. But now Jesus calls me out and for everybody to look at me. Now everybody know I'm on assistance. Now, everybody know I borrowed some money. Everybody know I, I'm, I'm in a rut right now. But what are you trying to prove? And the more I look in this text, I, I realize that the text is really has very little to do with the man. It has very little to do with his hand. It had very little to do with the circumstance, but everything that God was trying to do through the man. Because there was somebody, to, there was somebody in there that had to see a miracle. So what you're saying here, God is, God is about to use the very thing in your life that you're insecure about. God is about to use that thing to put you on the forefront so somebody else can get their deliverance. I wish I had somebody understand that right now. The very thing that you've been crying about and the very thing that you don't want to deal about is that same thing that God is going to use to bring you out to the forefront. Because the same people that saw you with your withered hand, because that's what the Bible says. The Bible says that they saw him coming to church. The Bible says that they saw him, that he was struggling. They saw that he had nothing going for himself, and they said nothing. And when the healer walked in the room, when the deliverer walked in the room, the Bible said that Jesus asked him, and he said, he said so what y'all going to do about it? And he said that there was nobody out there that wanted to do nothing. And the Bible says because Jesus was angered, Jesus said, stretch out your hand. I want to encourage somebody today that there is nobody around you right now that's about to stop this thing that God's going to do for you. There is not a devil in hell that can stop you from getting what God has for you. If you can get your mind to it and you can get your mind off, me being right here has nothing to do with me but everything to do with what God's about to do in me. The Bible says... That the very religious people, they followed him, not because they were looking for him to do good. Not because they wanted people to be delivered. They were following him because they were building a case. <laughs> they followed him because they were building up a case. They followed him because they were trying to get him accused. They followed him because they wanted him dead. They followed him because they knew without a shadow of a doubt that he's coming here and he's preaching something that we're not used to. He's preaching something that we can't get jiggy with. I come to let you know that when you start preaching the truth, don't be surprised when the very people around you, they're bothered by the truth. The Bible says, and they will know the truth and the truth will set them free. Anybody who don't want the truth um, don't want nothing good for you. But when you allow God, when you allow God to speak for you, when you allow God to speak through you, you'll realize it has nothing to do with me. It was only so God can get the glory out of my situation. The Bible says, the Bible says, he says, he says, he confronted them and their traditions. He says, so what is it then? He said, we're on the Sabbath day, so what good is it? You want the man to die, you don't want the man to live. What's better to do it? And nobody had an answer for him. Nobody had an answer for him. I'm going to tell you one thing. Sometimes people will resort to their traditions before they'll see the truth. People will fall back on what they know come to always believe before they ever move forward into what God is doing for them. And I want to encourage somebody that if you're going to get this revelation of what God is going to do for you, you got to be okay with not just reading the word, but reading the word and getting revelation of the word.
Because the word is powerful by itself. The word alone will get you out of your storm. The word alone can get you out of a situation. The word alone can make bodies healed. The word alone can get you out of a courthouse. The word alone, if you allow God to do it for you. I'm almost done. But the Bible says, in the most humiliating place this man probably could have been, to where I got to sit here and everybody know what's going on with me. And I don't even know what he's about to do, but I was obedient enough to go when he said, come forth. And the Bible says, with him not even knowing what the end result is, he just stands in front of the crowd. And after Jesus goes down the inquiry to test the, test the water to see everybody's heart, and when he found out that you had all these religious people of status, people with money, people with a name, people with a name, but they, they didn't want no good for them. And when Jesus found out that nobody was going to make a move for him, Jesus said, y'all crazy. Jesus said, stretch out your hand. And when the man stretched out his hand, when the man stretched out his hand, the Bible says that immediately he was healed. One thing about me is I like to work out. I like to go to the gym. I like to lift weights. And every time I lift weights, I may lift on a Monday. And after I leave the gym, I'm okay. But come Tuesday, it feel like something start tightening up on me. And by Wednesday, if I work my legs, it may feel like I can't walk. But there's something in me that tells me even though your legs is tight, you got to keep them moving. You got to stretch them legs. Because if you don't stretch the leg, the leg will tighten up on you and you won't go nowhere. My brother and my sister, even though Jesus did the miracle, it was his responsibility to stretch out his hand. And I know you've been hurting and I know you've been going through. But if you could just stretch your hand out in spite of what you're going through, it doesn't feel good right now. But just stretch your hand out. I know you've cried for last year, pillows filled with tears, but just stretch out your hand. What God got for you in this season, what you thought you lost, what you thought you lost, God is turning it around. Is there anybody in here that's going to stretch out your hand? Is there anybody in here that's going to stretch out your hand? Hell of high water, I'm stretching my hand. No, I'm stretching my hand. Lift up your head. Oh, ye gates and the king of glory. Stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand. Lord, while you're passing out blessings, don't forget about me. Even me, God. Even me, God. Wave your hand right now. And praise God like it's already. I said, praise him like it's already done. They know about your problem. Your issue. They know about what you're going through. They know about what you've been through. But it's all right. You know me then. But there is therefore no condemnation to them that are. Is there anybody in here? Glad that God changed your name. Is there anybody in here? Glad God rewrote the story. Open your mouth and praise him. The devil don't want you free. The devil don't want you free. But I made up in my mind that I'm stretching my hand out. I said, I'm stretching my hand out. One of the things I learned when I was going through physical therapy, 
I injured my back. And one of the things I learned is your muscles, of course, have memory, right? And sometimes when you hurt yourself, your body can be healed. Your body can be healed, but when, you, when, you, when you've hurt yourself and you realize doing this before used to hurt me, after you're healed, you have to psychologically tell your mind, this doesn't hurt no more. Some of y'all got to have enough faith to stretch out again. You've gotten discouraged, and your mind's telling you this is going to hurt before you even take the step. Your mind tells you, well, I can't, we, I can't even do that. You can't even step out on faith because you're so, you're so timid about what God is doing, and God is just saying, step out. Kingdom suffered violence, but the violence taketh by force. If you're afraid to stretch out your hand, how's God going to do it for you? I know you're hurting. I know it hurts. I know it hurts. But one thing I love about God is he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And when I was in physical therapy... My therapist acted as my coach because she knew what I could do even though I was limiting myself. So when I would stretch up my hand, she could say, you go a little further. You go a little further. And that's what God is about to do for somebody in here. He says, I'll send, he said, as we, we just got out of resurrection, we're on our way to Pentecost. He said, I'll send a comforter. And that comfort is going to help you through this. I don't know what your this is, but he's healing hands today. He's healing hands today. I'm going I'm, I'm to say this and I'm going to close. I didn't understand the significance to the text, and I, I just found this this morning as I was going through the text. This right here, this miracle in terms of Mark 3 when it happened, this is right before he established those apostles who would have changed the whole world. I want to encourage somebody, you got work to do. And the reason why God got to heal your hand is because he's putting you back on the job. You lost your fire, but he's giving it back. You lost your drive, but he's giving it back. You can't right now. You can't throw in the towel right now. This is your moment to keep on pressing. Hands lifted all over the sanctuary. I come to talk to those people who really want to stretch out again. Feels like you just give it your all the last time, but I want you to know the comforter's in the room right now and he's pulling you. And before you throw in the towel, listen, the reason why you can't die now is because your enemies got to see the miracle. Because he still got to put the table in front of the enemies in the presence of your enemies. He still got to make the enemy your footstool. So you, you ain't got no business dying right now. So you got to make it. You got to make it. You got to make it. It's not optional. I dare you to tell the devil he's a liar. Somebody, I, tell, I dare you to tell the devil he's a liar. He told you you weren't going nowhere. He told you you couldn't do it. He said you couldn't afford it. He said you couldn't go, but God said, I'm making provision. Stretch out your hand. If you don't, if you know the Lord as your personal and your Savior, 
and you need God to work some stuff out for you and your soul, I want to encourage you today, don't leave this place without coming in contact with a man that can change your life. If you don't know the Lord as your Lord and Savior, I dare you to make that step right now. Come on, don't wait for nobody. Jesus was teaching a gospel that says that I've come that you may have life and more abundantly. If you want to live in the abundance of what God promised you, it's yours today. Or perhaps you need prayer and you're just saying, I just, I just want to make it through this week. I'm saved. I know the Lord. But I just need to be encouraged. If that's you, come on, make your way down to this altar today. Don't let this moment pass you by. Don't let this moment pass you by Storage is empty. come on come on it got nothing to do with nobody and else I am a has nothing to do with nobody else come on come on come on oh lord I'm available to you Come on, my will. My will I give to Come you. Come on, I'll do what you say. I'll do what you say. Use you me, Lord. Use me, Lord. To show someone. To show someone the way. And enable me to say. And enable me to say. My story. My story. And I am, I am. And I am available to you. Come on, let's with hands lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, you understand what we need. God, it's through your word I'm that we're healed. It's you. through your word that we're delivered. And Father, right now, I pray, God, that you would heal. Deliver. Set free, God. God, you know what everybody at this altar needs. And we lay our needs down to you right now in the name of Jesus, knowing that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above everything that we could ever ask or think. God, we know that you're able to do it. So we praise you in advance. We praise you for what you're going to do. We praise you for what you've already done. Things that we couldn't even talk about, we give it to you. The things we couldn't even share, we give it back to you. We thank you for what you're going to do. Now, if you believe God, I dare you to praise him like it's already done. Come on, come on, put them hands together. Come on, put them hands together and give them praise. Come on, give them praise. Come on, give them praise. Oh, my will. If everybody can, while I'll we're here, I'm so sorry, while we're here, I believe the atmosphere is right. I was given direction from leadership. If everybody, every member, everybody part of the church, let's have corporate prayer. Amen. We want to pray for the church. We want to pray for pastor. Everyone, if we can come to the altar. Amen. How many of you know that prayer changes things? I said, how many of you know that prayer changes things? There's so many of us, among us that are sick. So many among us that need to be healed and delivered. Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. Come on, I'll do. I'll do what you say do use me Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say 
Come on, my storage is empty. My storage. My storage is empty. And I'm available. And I am available to you. Now, before we pray, I dare you to get that thing in your mind that you know you need God to do. Get those people in your mind that you know God need to handle, who God need to heal, who God need to deliver, and allow your faith to, to know that it's already done. Because when we pray this prayer, we're praying this prayer believing that it's already done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we love you. We praise you right now, God. Lord, we're praying right now that you would move right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray that you touch Pastor Johnson, God. Touch him from the crown of his head, God, to the sole of his feet. Oh, God, we know that you were wounded for our transgressions, God. Bruised for our iniquities, God. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, God. And with your stripes we're healed, God. God, we stand on healing today, God. God, we stand on your word today, God. God, we know that you're able, God. God, we pray his mind right now, God. Touch his mind right now in the name of Jesus. Allow the body to line up the way you see fit, God. In the name of Jesus, God. God, we stand in proxy right now, God. Knowing, oh God, that there's a miracle that will take place, God. Oh God, that you're going to make it good, God. I pray that you would touch his family right now, God. Give him strength in the name of Jesus. Move right now in the name of Jesus, God. Move the way you want to move, oh God. Satan, the Lord God, rebuke you. And the blood of Jesus is against you. We plead the blood right now. We thank God for healing. We thank God for delivering. Move in the church right now, God. Touch every member right now, God. Touch every member right now, God. Name by name, God. Row by row. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, you're able to do it. God, you're able to work it out. God, you're able to move, God. Every family, God, that's represented here today, God, I pray that you would send a fresh wind, God. In the name of Jesus, God, go to everybody's home right now, God. In the name of Jesus, God, go where we can't go, God. Do what we can't do, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we call on your glory, God. We pull on the anointing, oh God, to make things better, God, uh, to make things good, God, uh, in the name of Jesus, God, uh, send your healing power. I said, send your healing power in the name of Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, somebody say, Jesus. Uh, come on, Jesus. Uh, come on, Jesus. Uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Uh, come on, Jesus. Uh, come on, Jesus. Uh, help me, Jesus. We thank you right now. Now, if you believe God is going to do it, I dare you to go back to your seat and give God praise. Come on, say Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Come on, tell him yes. Come on, tell him yes. Come on, tell him yes. And tell him yes. I said, tell the Lord yes. Yeah. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yeah, 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 Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus. Jesus.
as we prepare for the morning communion.
I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had taken, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. At the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. But if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. As it's written, so I've read.
this time we ask that you stand as we give and mourn his offering. Be directed from the rear by the, the knuckles. Amen. Precious God, I come now to say thank you. Thank you for the gifts that have been received. We thank you for the gift. We thank you for the givers. We pray that it is blessed and multiplied. And we pray that the giver who gave will have no home in want, that there will be no home in want. We promise to use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
our pastor, Pastor Johnson, in his absence, to Reverend Laws, Reverend Kahim, to uh, Minister Hinton, to Minister Styles and Minister Styles, to the chairman of our board, uh, Deacon Brinson, to the chairman of our mother board, Mother Williams, to all that make up this congregation. Just a few announcements this morning. Uh, thanks to all that joined us for Sunday school this morning, and we invite y'all to come out and be with us every Sunday at 9.30. Our 97th church anniversary is almost here upon us. The theme for the year is Legacy of Love, Journey of Hope, coming from the 1 Corinthians 13 and 13. And if you look on the back of your morning bulletin, the colors are there for uh, each generation, each decade. The colors are on the back that we're asking you to wear on that particular day. And as you march in on that day, we hope we have a lot of people in your decades. So start inviting people to come and be with you on the third Sunday in May. Also reminder to the committee, the 97th Church Anniversary Committee, there is a brief meeting uh, following morning service this morning. Uh, thanks to all that came out on yesterday for the men's fellowship breakfast. The hospitality committee will also be meeting with Sister Erica today following morning service and she'd like to, uh, for you all to meet her in the fellowship hall, all of those that are on the uh, hospitality committee. Uh, also, if you would like to go with us to the book reveal, that will be uh, on April the 20th, leaving here from the church. Uh, please see um, Sister Moody following morning service so she can start writing down the names. We would like to fill our bus up for the first time, so if you would like to go, please see Sister Moody, uh, and she will get you signed up for us to go with us. On our birthday list today, we have little Maya Gentle. Anyone else? Or Maya, I don't think she's here. To, she's not here today. Anyone else celebrating a birthday today? Okay, so to Amaya, we want to say happy birthday, and I know her grandmother would tell her that we all said happy birthday. On our prayer list today, we're still praying for our pastor, asking for everyone to continue in prayer for him. Also pray for Deacon Robert King, who called this morning asking for prayer. Also, Sister Etta Brown, um, not feeling well this morning, asking for prayer. And we're asking you to keep in prayer the Golston family and the loss of Milo and his family. Also keep in uh, prayer the Case family and the loss of Brother Craig and the arrangements, the homegoing arrangements are tomorrow at 3 o'clock with uh, family visitation from 2 to 3 at Flanagan Funeral Home. So please keep the Craig, uh, Craig Case's family in your prayers. Also, Milo Ghost's family in your prayers. Also, we're asking for prayer for Deacon Raymond Henderson, who is in ICU at Northside Hospital of Forsyth. Please keep him in your prayers. Uh, one other announcement. Sister... Um, Jane Bennett. Sister Bennett, stand up so everybody know who you are. Sister Bennett. Okay, Sister Bennett is asking uh, for your ideas and suggestions. She is the, is it Mimo? Mimo, Mimo uh, fashion designer, and she is sponsoring a yellow tie youth gala, and she would like all the youth and anyone else that would like to work with her on this gala. It will be held on April the 27th at the Buford Community Center here on Bona Road, Buford Youth Community Center here on Bona Road. The special guest will be Sister Nakia Maddox, brother Jimmy Warren of the Seahawks, uh, a former Seahawks player, and also Dr. Jeremy Moore will be a special guest as well. She's asking for everyone's help and support. The theme is positivity. Surround yourself with positivity. So please, uh, if you have uh, ideas or suggestions, she is here today soliciting your help in making this a great success. If you're visiting with us today, if you would please stand. If you're here and you choose not to, we want you to know that you are truly welcome. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Isn't it just nice just to love on Jesus and to know that he loves you back? 
Uh, we thank God for uh, what our hearts have felt today. Come on, let's all stand. Let's go home. Um, I thank God for his goodness, his mercy. As, as already stated, let's continue to keep pastor in your prayers. Um, and I pray that you all have a, a wonderful week. Now, I know I'm going to get this wrong, but I'm going to reach up <laughs> as high as I can. Believe in God to reach down the rest of the way. Now come on and go with God. Y'all be blessed.